Okay, so, hi, I'm Jeremy. This is uh, what I look like. Sometimes you hear the voice and you uh, don't always know what the person looks like, but this is me. This is what I have, my normal face. Um, reds, so just finished Reds. Did make a few mistakes that was uh, not awesome. I wish I hadn't done the uh, messing up the retreats. I, I, if I look back, I'm pretty sure I won't, uh, I'm pretty sure it won't be like a huge uh, mistake, but it counts. And as we see, we came down to really just two turns left for the Reds to accomplish their goals. So the fact that, you know, maybe if the Whites could have held on for another turn or two, that would have been pushing it to the wire. Or, you know, I essentially probably just would have gone for a take every city kind of victory. But I wanted to see if I could push it because we had been having pretty good successes against the Whites and I kind of wanted to go for something I'd never done. Um, this is my first time playing this game, the full campaign game to completion. Uh, most of the time I play this game and it just becomes such a foregone conclusion pretty much right as the tournament scenario ends that I've really not had interest in um, keeping it going just because I have other games I want to play. Uh, but I did want to record this and show a full video because it has not been touched, to my knowledge, on um, YouTube or Board Game Geek or any of that, that stuff. So I wanted to show what the full game looks like and how it can be kind of still challenging for the red player, even if they feel like they've had really good successes early on against the whites. I will say, however, that as you could tell by some of my tone as we got to the end, it, it was getting tedious. It just becomes tedious, I think. There's a lot of action in the beginning of the game. There's a lot of potential for the white player. I mean, they pretty much are in a hopeless situation, but based on some of the random event rolls you can get, uh, some of the events that can go your way, um, you can make a nice stand. And I, I played them terribly <laughs> in this game. I'm very rusty, and I just was awful, awful, awful at, do, do, at playing the white. So please don't look at this and think, oh, that's that's killer strategy. I mean, it's, it's killer in the fact that they all died. Um, I didn't necessarily play the Reds that well either. I got kind of uh, foolhardy with them sometimes, but you have to. Um, and there was some pressure points. There was that time in, uh, when the AFSR threatened Zaritsyn and came close to actually knocking uh, forces out of there. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that the beginning of the game offers more potential and fun. It's a lot more interaction. I could see why the tournament scenario, which only goes to uh, strategic turn E, uh, could be the more fun scenario to play because it's faster, it's more exciting in terms of the white player having more options, having more units, having more ability to really strike at the red player and see if they can get them off balance enough to keep a sustained campaign going. Um, because if you play the full game, there's going to be that weird lull where <laughs> you're the white player and then all of a sudden you're going down, 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 and then they're going to come to Poland maybe and then you go back up or you're trying to fly delaying tactics in Central Asia like I did or hoping you get partisans and... and uh, that, to me, is a lot less satisfying of play. Um, for other people, it may not be. You know, the ultimate holdout, changing history, for them is the exciting part. For me, it's just like, I like the beginning parts. And I think right around strategic turn E, when the uh, tournament scenario game, I think that's what it is, the tournament scenario, uh, when that ends, a short game, I should say, uh, I think that's pretty much perfect. I mean, it's a good amount of time. If you're experienced, you could play this game pretty much in a couple hours doing that with some good two players that knew what they were doing back and forth. Uh, and I think it's just going to be more rewarding because you're going to know right then uh, where it's trending to. If the whites can hold on, then it's pretty much going to trend towards the reds having a much more difficult or stalemate victory. Um, but if the whites just get clobbered, then you're not playing a game for so long for many turns where the white player literally is just trying to make the most annoying choice possible as opposed to having like really meaningful strategic decisions. And, and I'm not trying to say every game needs to give every side meaningful decisions. Sometimes you just don't have them or the situation precludes those sort of things happening. But, um, you know, this is the Russian Civil War. The whites, uh, I sort of, I agree with, with Ted uh, Ted's assessment that the whites could not have won. Um, they could have had some sort of different kind of peace, right? Or they could have made the, the conflict more protracted. And I think that's sort of what he goes for in his design. And, and, and that's a suitable enough alternate history for me. I think keeping the Reds from solidifying their power is, is in itself a white victory. Uh, anyway, if you are new to war games or newer to war games, I think this would be a fine uh, game to have in your collection if you're interested in Russian Civil War or Ted Racier in general. Uh, he obviously strikes a nerve with some people, but he also is, some people really love him and some people don't. Um, this is a good introductory level game. It has enough concepts in it that uh, you can start playing more complex game after this, and you'll have a lot of the basic understandings of like zone of control, retreats, the combat results table. Uh, the combat system is a little different. I've never seen any other kind of game. The sort of doing odds ratios is normal, but then sort of tossing in the number of units you have in a die roll and multiplying that, that's sort of unique to this game. Um, 
I will say the rules are need an index very badly. I wish we had someone. Could, I should probably just do it, but I don't have time. And um, it's not that complex of a game, really. But it, you saw me many times sort of looking at little rules, trying to remember little exceptions. Um, in general, the rules are written fairly well. Uh, it's just that they really need an index. And uh, there's a lot of little things scattered around the place that you start to look up and you're like, oh, right, you know, like the Machno district, that was a whole pain. And honestly, I'm so stupid because what I discovered later is that on uh, the uh, other side of our sort of random events uh, sheet here, that uh, we also have nice um, writing, which might be kind of mirrored for you. I don't know if that's going to be fixed. I'm using the other side of my camera to do this. Anyway, and that sort of details in, much, in, in a nice little summary way of sort of the rules you need to keep in mind and so that actually would have helped this probably is actually the equivalent of what i'm asking for um but i still would like an index but that's okay that's a really minor quibbling issue um you know the rules themselves are not that long right it's just 19 oh it's really like 16 17 pages of rules that's pretty good um so if you're a newer war game uh war gamer or someone trying to get into it i think this is a totally fun game to do that um it is the reprint is good the quality is nice uh, the counters are much much thicker uh, I, do, I think the other ones were just that thin style that I had in Roads to Leningrad, because Roads to Moscow has a little thicker ones, I think, but it's Roads to Leningrad uses the thin style, and that was just sort of, um, when this game was originally made, that was the counter, that was, those were standard components in 2001. Uh, the reprint, though, made it much nicer, so these will hand up, uh, stand up to actual repeated plays. Um, yeah, I mean, I just like this game. I mean, I like it. It's not, it's, you know, now that I'm actually played more war games, uh, you know, this one definitely feels a lot more simpler to me and does not offer the sort of uh, brain-burning thought exercise that I sort of now crave in some war games. I feel like I've moved to that level where I want a little more of a challenge. Um, but nevertheless, it's still a very, very satisfying game in a lot of ways. I think if I play this again, I will only play the short scenario because it's quick to play now for me and uh, there's enough variability there with the random events that you can get a lot of different uh, games. I mean I had a game uh, last year I played where the Whites uh, solo where the Whites acquired two airplanes over the first three turns and so they were able to really push aggressively in the south and uh, really make a move and they took Tsaritsyn and actually almost threatened to take uh, Moscow before eventually just sort of burning out on a drive uh, and losing all their units but it was sort of a glory moment right if I could get to Moscow I can win. Um, so that was fun, and that can definitely happen, and, and, and the Whites did not get very great events this turn. Uh, they did get tanks, that was pretty sweet. Um, but anyway, so yeah, Reds. Uh, not, a, not, a, not a terribly complex game, I think that's good though. Uh, pretty good fun, I would stick with the short scenario. And especially if you have an interest in the topic, it is not complicated. It is basically a magazine game that has been given a much nicer coat of paint. Um, but it has all that sort of simplicity. But you know, if you're looking for something that's not too crazy on Chrome, that gives you a nice feel for the period, that has a lot of things that still have that war game crunchness to it uh, without being overwhelming, this could be the game for you. So anyway, that's it. Uh, Reds. And with that, I'm out. And we'll move on to the next game, which I will just let you know is going to be... Actually, this might be all backwards writing, but Elusive Victory. Okay, not W1815, which I'm going to probably just play for fun anyway. Anyway. Cool. Good talking to you, and uh, onwards and upwards.